So now let's welcome on a new really exciting speaker. We have Patrick Olson, who's the CEO of Cyberphoto. So we'll welcome him onto the stage here. Hi, Patrick. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Maria. Do you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Hello. We hear you perfectly. Oh. Perfectly. Perfect. Uh, so Thank Patrick, you very much. Patrick has a long uh, history of working in the consumer electronics industry and Cyberphoto, where you're the CEO today, is one of Scandinavia's largest and oldest suppliers of photographic equipment. And uh, the theme for this session is uh, business growth through hyper personalization. So I'll leave the stage over to you, Patrick. <laughs> Big welcome again. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, I have no pressure on me. It's the first time, really, that I, I have a speech in a webinar. So I have uh, really, really hard to, to look and see the audience and, and the reactions of what I am saying. But short about me, uh, before I get into the topic, I will short just brief you a little bit about myself and my background. I am 53 years young. Uh, and I've been active in, as you said, the food and consumer electronics industry for over 25 years. Uh, it started in early 1990s uh, at the German photography company, Agfa Gevert. And then I moved on to the Swedish specialist retail chain called Expert, uh, which is not uh, with us anymore. Uh, and further to Canon Sweden as a key account manager to finally land at Cyberphoto as CEO. Uh, what the future have to hold remains to be seen. So we'll see. My goal has always been to move on after about five years at the same company. So as not become a tired inventory that only managed daily, in, uh, managed daily instead of developing the business. Um, I was promised to myself that I, it was a promise to myself that I now have betrayed after 14 years as CEO of Cyberphoto, but I still, developing myself i think and and i i it's uh, really really fun to go to work every morning and that's the that's the most important part okay short what is cyber photo the foundation of this company as maria said is is uh, from 1955 when it was a small photo shop or photo store in the center of umeå in the northern part of sweden named tgs photo and Ingemar Lövgren, who is the father of the today's owner, Thomas, uh, ran the company and the store until 1994, when his son took over the business completely. In the mid-90s, when internet and the home computers started entering households, Thomas was very interested in building internet pages with HTML code, which resulted in him starting to sell used cameras over internet by mail order. And Cyberphoto as company was established in 1995. Our payoff text has always been personal service on the internet. And the vision is that we should always exceed the expectation of everyone we meet. Of everyone we meet, whatever it's a customer, a supplier, a friend or a visitor to us. And our aim is to grow organically every year. And the goal is never to land in a negative result. From 1995 to present day, we have gone from a turnover to around 400,000 <coughs> sorry euro to the fact that we have now passed 36 million euros without yet showing a negative result. And then all these words, words about exceeding expectation, being personal, being reachable, being the best of the best to take care of customers. The words are so easy to say for everyone, but they aren't as easy to live by for everyone. But never forget that today, it is only the small, small difference that makes the difference. The products are the same for everyone. The prices are about the same for everyone. And the delivery times when it comes to e-commerce are about the same for everyone. So what is left to compete with? Well, it's just a small difference in everything we do and how we do it that makes the difference. 
I'm going to tell you a little about our market, the photo market in Sweden. Uh, for cyber photo, it is primarily, primarily our interest is photography and video. That is the foot on our company, that is the driving force. However, we already, about 10 years, in, years ago, we saw where the market was going. F example with mobile phones as a new tool, which quickly was developed into taking pictures. A tool that we always have available in our pockets and with images that today for many, both in quality and in the huge opportunities for this mention, is good enough. We saw the connection between the mobile phones and photo as an interest early on, after which the product category became a natural part in our range of products. This is to include outdoor equipment as binoculars, dog trackers, GPS receivers, communication radios, and more as natural complementary tools in the interest of our end users. The decision we made through several categories and a wider product range provide to be right. The photo market is changing and it is changing very, very fast. The number of photo products sold on the Swedish market has decreased by as much as 80% and the sales value has halved in the last eight years, while we are still growing in our categories. So I'm very happy for that, something we are doing right. <coughs> now I'm going to talk a little about something that I keep very close to my heart, except for the little pink elephant I have there. I am, I think uh, many of the Swedish uh, people who is looking at me right now, uh, nosed elephant as a children's program when I was young. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, our ambition has always been to put you as a customer first, to always understand the customer's needs, to, to provide the absolute best personal service, both before, during and after the purchase. We always write our product text ourselves based on what we ourselves as users think of the products before what the manufacturers themselves think of it. To always be available and provide answers as quickly as possible through phone, mail and chat and social media to always do everything we can to ensure that the customer is ultimately so satisfied with our response and or our willingness to find proactive solutions and thereby become the obvious choice of store at the next purchase. We are convinced that a personal response on all levels and through all processes automatically activates the most powerful form of marketing. Uh, that's the form for, for word to, uh, of, of uh, word of mouth is called the special in, in the specialist language is and in many cases is it a little bit taboo because uh, they have abused it in pyramid sales but it's called le multi-level marketing if i am happy as a customer sorry my phone is ringing i'm a bad person sorry 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 that wasn't my meaning something has to happen always uh, okay uh, multi-level marketing if i as a customer are happy I will tell five or ten people about it. And I will also do it if I am disappointed at the business. So we must never, never underestimate our customer's experience. If the customer feel that we have done something wrong, it is the customer's experience that applies, nothing else. You can never, never win over a customer who is dissatisfied no matter what. Get personal by always giving each customer your full attention, understanding the customer, making the customer happy 
It is the only thing that counts and that will provide long-term profitability. If I lose a few euros today to make a customer completely satisfied, it gives me an opportunity to get both the customer and my lost euros back with additional profit. If I do not satisfy, to satisfy the customer, I will be allowed to keep my euros and I will also not get any help from the customer for our future growth. I will tell you a short story uh, from my own life. Uh, I bought a used car. Uh, it was uh, 2012. It was an Audi, manufactured 2008. When I have used the car in, in, in the car in, in two years, and I was at home and I was washing the car, I saw small bubbles at the back door. And I didn't know really what it was, but I took uh, contact with, with uh, the, the nearby Audi dealer in the town nearby Umeå. And I showed them and they said, oh, that's sink bladders. You know, on the top of the metal, we'll make a sink coating. And on the sink coating, we, we lay the, the paint. And when the sink bladders, the, the sink is releasing from the metal, it will be a bladder and the, the paint will crack. And the, the, when the paint cracks, you get in moisturize, moisture and it will be rust. So I said to the call there, oh shit, what should we do about it? Then he said to me, oh, your Audi is now six years old and uh, you have driven it uh, a couple of miles. So I, I'm sorry, I have no guarantee that we can do anything about it, but I will check what I can do and I come back to you with a proposition. It uh, went a couple of days and the uh, Audi dealer took contact, contact with me again and he said, okay, even if the car is only six years old, the paint should not fall off. We take this as a goodwill and we repaint your car. That's no problem. I was very happy and I told other many in my, of my friends and, and so about what nice guys they were. And they took care of me. That was customer care for me. That was customer care for me. There was no guarantees, but it was customer care. So I can tell everything good about them. And even right now, I am telling you about it. And they have not paid me anything for me to tell you that they are amazing. Uh, about three years ago, I bought a new car. It was a BMW. And uh, uh, the car was three years old. And I uh, had driven it for one year. <laughs> and when I, I am washing my car home, uh, I see the same bladders, the same cracks in the paint as I had in my Audi. Due to the Audi was six years old and this uh, BMW was only four years old. So I did it the last time I took my car. I went into the, to the car dealer. In this case, it was BMW called the car dealer. And I showed him the, the back door and he said, oh, that's no good. You have uh, bladders in your paint. Yeah, I know. I said, what can we do about it? And he told me, oh, um, this is uh, what you call sink bladders. Yes, I, it was my, I, I thought it was sink bladders. Yeah, and you know, we have guarantee for the rust and that's for the metal. And we have guarantee for the paint uh, and that's for the paint. But this is not metal and this is not paint. So I'm sorry, this is no guarantee. And I said, as I did before when I was at Audi, what can we do about it? And he said, I'm sorry, I, can't, don't, I cannot do anything about it. What can I do about it? I said, and he said, if you go in there, there's our paint shop and you can uh, talk with them and, and listen how much they want to, to repaint your car. 
I say thank you and I went away. Um, probably he saved about 200 euros at that time. Because repainting my back door at the BMW should be a cost about 400 euros here in Sweden. Um, and if he had told me that I'm sorry, we cannot take it at the warranty, but we can do like this. Can we share? You take 200 euros, I take 200 euros. Is that okay? Probably I have said, yes, no problem. I am very grateful. Thank you very much. He did not do that. Uh, so I went away and he didn't have to pay 200 euros. So he saved that money right now, right then. And he also made me talk about it for you right now. That's the interesting thing with customer care. And that's the very, very interesting thing to being personal to every customer that you meet. And this is what my heart is beating for. Take care of the customer, whatever happened, because you cannot, you cannot win over a dissatisfied customer. This takes time. This takes very much time. So, <clears throat> about giving us time to our customer through data-driven personalization and marketing. Now I came to the really topic. Uh, taking care of customer, being 100% personal with each indiv individual requires hard work and it requires a lot of time to do it. As Cyberphoto has grown, we ask ourselves daily, how can we become more personal with every customer that we meet? How can we be more effective in our willingness to deal with everyone based on everyone's interest and everyone's need? How can we use our knowledge of each individual customer in the best way? Through the opportunities that we have today to analyze our customer data, it is currently only the imagination that sets the limit on how we can automate parts of our communication with the customer, so it will be personal. I will describe a few examples. Um, today, we can let our system, through personal newsletters, SMS or CRM mailings show only what the customer is actually interested in, based on the information and the history that the customer has provided to us. Example, the Sony interested customer receives offers or information about Sony products with suitable accessories, advice and tips. While the Canon customer receives the same applies to Canon as brand, the camera customer does not have to receive offers of flashlights and binoculars unless we decide that should have it, that they should have it. In the next step, we can do the same thing today with our website. We can automatically, automatically and based on each customer's interest that we require in all the data we are gathering, show exactly what suits the specific customer best, instead of creating pages with a wide range of products that do not affect the individual customer in a positive and personal way with the same accuracy. Another example is if a customer has visited our page and look at the specific model of mobile phone. And he has been there several times, several occasions. We can use the data we have automatic to, automatically to give the customer the last incentive for him or her to complete the purchase after the third visit or the fifth visit. visit. We can do this to a nice pop-up that offers a customer uh, an extra discount if they, they make their purchase in within a set of time. Alternatively, an email with an offer of a 
favorable partial payments of that particular mobile phone if the purchase is complete within a set of time. The possibilities through our systems based on the information we have about each customer to communicate with them in a personal and efficient way while giving ourselves more time to take care of each individual customer focused on our core business and create the best offers through the best product range for our market, for customers in almost endless time, I hope. However, it is of great importance to find a balance where customers do not feel persecuted or harassed. Finding the balance to this is important as acceptance can, uh, can differ greatly between different markets, countries and age and groups. So that, that's a thing that only you know best from your customers and at your source. So think of the balance. Do not mail them to death. Uh, find the, the, the perfect way to do it. For us at Cyberfoot, this is just the beginning. There is so much more that we can do and there is so much more that we will do. But in everything we do, we must never, never forget what I said earlier, that the market is about same for everyone, the products is about same for everyone, the prices and the delivery options are about same for everyone. The only thing we can compete with today and be absolutely best at is your willingness to exceed the expectation of every individual we meet. It is just a small difference that makes the difference. And now I am ready, Maria. That's all for me.